I'm probably gonna be burnt at the stake for this, but the state of female characters in Genshin is not that great. Before you come at me, I love the Genshin girlies, okay? And they are, in my opinion, beautifully designed. I'm not here to shit on how they can look too sexy or just have fan service designs. Like, no, it's not that. I don't have a problem with fan service existing in an anime gacha game. It's their writing that I have a lot of issues with. Objectively, there is just a really big difference in quality when it comes to the female and male characters' writing in Genshin. If you've been in the Genshin community long enough, first, I'm so sorry. Second, you'd probably know that most of the story quests and lore that people prefer are usually the male characters. Zhongli, Venti, I'll hate them, Scaramouche, Child, Albedo. You can love or hate them, but almost everyone can agree that they're all so different from one another that they can't help but feel like fully fleshed out characters. Zhongli and Venti are both male archons and both are introduced early in the game, and yet they are complete opposites and they are both memorable in their own ways, in very different ways. I can't say the same for the female characters though, but are they really as bad as this god? forsaken community makes them out to be. Let's go over the reason why most people think the women in Genshin are terribly written, starting with the biggest offender, the workaholic waifus. When talking about female characters in Genshin, this is probably the trope that you will hear the most. So let's meet and break down the workaholic waifus, starting with Jean. Jean is the first character that we meet that obviously suffers from this trope. Her story quest is basically just the traveler going around helping her do her job because apparently she doesn't know how to properly delegate to her employees. Which in her defense, Jean is only the acting grandmaster and Farka, the actual grandmaster of the Knights of Avonius, did leave with god knows how many men so you can't really blame Jean for being overwhelmed like she was. That in itself is fine. As someone who has a full-time job myself, we love to see someone at the brink of death because of work. And we did get to know her quite a bit in the Mondstadt Archon quest, so having the traveler help her out felt like a genuine interaction that would have happened. And as the player we do feel a slight attachment to her as a character. Then we get to Li Wei and we meet everyone's OG waifu, Ke Ching, who just like Jean is dedicated to her job, but it's slightly different because Ke Ching seems to know how to delegate and be more efficient at handling her workload. She struggles more in establishing boundaries and maintaining a healthy work-life balance, which is why we spent most of the second lantern ride trying to convince her to take a break. Next up, is Ganyu. Ganyu's whole personality is that she's so overworked and is so much of a workaholic that her subordinates quite literally cannot survive without her. In her story quest, we get a glimpse of her inner struggles of being part adeptus and part human, which is a really interesting storyline that is unique to her. But Hoyoverse, for whatever reason, decided to not explore that and instead went with an unrelated plot about tax evasion. In the second half of her story quest, they just made Ganyu deal with some tax evasion work and then have her convinced by her co-workers to go back to work for no other reason than them not being able to handle all of the extra workload if she quits. So make of that what you will. Fast forward to Inazuma and we meet the most controversial waifu to date, Kokomi. Rebellion leader, genius strategist, who is so infamous and got memed so hard for being a so-called genius that most of the community can't even take her seriously anymore. In case you forgot or blocked it out of your memory like I did, Kokomi's story quest is about her, surprise surprise, being overworked. She is overexerting herself to write a step-by-step -step guidebook for her soldiers on every possible situation that might suddenly occur, aka what you would commonly call as micromanagement, which is the worst thing you can do when leading a whole ass army in war. And what's worse is that in the story quest, she acts like she has no idea what she's doing, and she's supposed to be this super genius strategist. It's like Hoyo is trying to make the traveler and in turn the players feel bad and sympathize with Ko 
Okomi after seeing her struggle being introverted and overworked that she has to go hide in a cave to recharge and having all of us go oh whoa poor introverted waifu being tired after being a kick-ass leader all day but for me at least it kinda had the opposite effect because Hoyu sort of forgot to show her actually kicking ass and being a genius strategist both in the Archon quest and in her own story quest. Her winning the negotiations against Kujo Sara was purely luck because apparently some of the Tenryo Commission soldiers were also planning a mutiny. So that victory proved nothing. She also for some reason decided to promote the soldiers that were plotting behind her back like ma'am are you good why are you promoting soldiers who are going behind your back i mean it's very hard to see this as anything other than an attempt to make Kokomi seem more gracious and big brain than she actually is i mean don't get me wrong she is gracious and kind but they still haven't shown the big brain part of her character yet honestly i can go on and on in my kokomi tangent but let's get back to the point i'm trying to make here so Jean is a woman who is struggling to keep up with her work and protect her people because her boss left her to essentially fend for herself. Kaching is someone with strong values who cares deeply about her nation and genuinely finds fulfillment in her work, which makes it hard for her to draw healthy boundaries. Ganyu is a devout follower of Rex Lapis who struggles in between two very different worlds. And finally, Kokomi is a genius war strategist who doesn't like the ugly side of war and struggles in leading her people due to her introverted nature. When you put it this way, the only similarities that they have is that all four of them are women in power. So then why do people consider all of them to be the same overworked waifu? See, the problem with these women isn't their characterization or their lore, it's their story quest being recycled over and over again, which is essentially just the traveler helping them do their job over and over again. Instead of exploring their very unique circumstances and character traits, we just got to do the same thing four different times. Which unfortunately, is how most players will get to know these characters. The story quests in Genshin are meant to be Hoyo's sales pitch for you to pull said character, which is why they tend to be released at the same time as the character's initial banner. With this in mind, I guess I can kinda see why Hoyo picked the easiest way to sell these characters as waifus. One story quest is usually 40 to 50 minutes tops, so seeing how little time Hoyo has to sell you that character, it's easy to see why they'd hope we as the players would fall for these characters faster if they are boxed into a beloved trope in anime, which is the overworked waifu. The powerful, hardworking, and dutiful woman is vulnerable only to you trope. You have to admit that to the majority of Genshin players that being east asian guys this sounds pretty freaking appealing and i hate it i personally hate it i think by boxing these characters into tropes makes them uninteresting and is the reason why people think these four women are the same overworked waifu just in different packaging are they groundbreaking characters not by a long shot but when you dig deeper they at least are distinct from each other and are memorable in their own way strongly is also an overworked character. The whole point of the Liyue Archon quest was about him wanting to retire after thousands of years of non-stop work. Yet because of how that quest was written and executed, it felt completely different than say Ganyu's or Kokomi's because the traveler's role was different. The traveler still helped Zhongli with his work but he did so in unknowingly helping the humans prove themselves to Morax that they were able to fend for themselves so that he can retire in peace. The second but not as bad offender to the why female characters in Genshin are bad narrative are the boring 
and uninteresting waifus. Honestly, the worst thing that I can say about the girls that I would put in this category is that they just aren't given enough time to shine. Or if they do, they just feel like fan service rather than an actual character quest where we can get to know them better. Let's start with Hu Tao. She is the marketing archon of Genshin Impact. And there I say the most popular character in the game, almost rivaling a certain someone, but we'll talk about her later. Hu Tao being as popular as the first female archon is a feat in itself, considering she's just a regular girl with a slightly irregular job and employee. But she's pretty close to normal, all things considered. But does her popularity mean she's a good character? Let me ask you this, what do we really know about about Hu Tao from the quests in the game. Unsurprisingly, not a lot. If you don't go out of your way to read her lore, then she will just be another cheerful waifu who happens to be able to see ghosts, and is also a bit of a prankster. And while all of that is true, the more serious somber side of Hu Tao is never really explored in the game. We know that she's a lot smarter than she looks she also deals with a lot of death given her line of work, and she has the most powerful god in Teyvat as her errand boy. Yet all of this is never explored, which is something that happens a lot in Genshin. Next up, we have Eula. Eula is someone who also has interesting lore. She comes from a disgraced family, she is unfairly hated by everyone in town just because of her lineage. And we did get a somewhat decent story quest exploring this side of her. But the main issue with Eula is that she is a myth at this point. The only other time she appears outside of her story quest is limited time events, either only showing up for two seconds or if she does have a more prominent role. The event is centering around one of the most lore relevant characters in the game. So it doesn't really give her a lot of time to shine or make a memorable impression on the players. Next up, we have Yoimiya and Nilu. Both are very friendly, bubbly girl next door who are dedicated to their craft. And while a lot of people might find them boring because they are just normal girls with very normal jobs, I find them charming. There is nothing wrong with a character just being normal. The problem with both of them is, again, their story quest, just like Hu Tao's, is not about them. It's about a random NPC who just happens to be in their orbit, which again is a whole different video on itself. But other than being nice, their whole shtick is being sweet to the traveler. And because of that, some people might consider them as fan service characters. There's also another 5 star that comes to mind when talking about too much fan service in the form of traveler simping, but we are talking about her later. But again, this is an anime gacha game, so complaining about too much fan service will literally get me nowhere. So let's talk about the characters that, at least personality-wise, aren't really there for fan service. Do people really want morally ambiguous femme fatale waifus? The waifus in this category are the ones who in theory should be the opposite of the girl next door we just discussed. These gals are supposed to be the femme fatales. They are supposed to step on you, degrade you, and put you in your place. They are supposed to be morally ambiguous ladies. But the question is, do people really want morally ambiguous female characters? At least in Genshin. I've already made a video on A and whether or not she was a good character, so I won't talk too much about her. But out of the four Archons we know, A is easily the most disliked or at least controversial. And a lot of the dislike towards her is due to her being morally ambiguous. When we first meet A, she has caused a lot of pain. She abandoned her sentient puppet and she's just an overall selfish character. She was also the first playable female antagonist that we meet in the game. And right after that, Hoyo went out of their way to waifu her almost immediately with her first story quest. It's almost like Hoyo knows some of the players wouldn't pull if she stayed an antagonist or a morally ambiguous character. And then we have her familiar, Yai Miko. Both stunning and cunning, Miko is the mischievous Kitsune character in Genshin. She also acts the most different 
compared to the rest of the female cast. That being, she couldn't give two shits about the traveler and is usually just doing things because it benefits her more than it does anyone else. Her story quest, in my opinion, is one of the better ones as it does explore the yokai of Inazuma and it does show both her vulnerable and mischievous side. It was a fun quest and it made me think that Yae Miko is one of the most compelling female characters in the game just because she feels and acts differently. In her quest, she is mean, smug, and arrogant. She takes advantage of people just because she can and is reluctant to help unless it benefits her in some way. But in a game that is already filled with friendly and warm women, you'd think people would appreciate Miko as a character better, right? Right? Well, it depends. You don't have to like Yae Miko as a character because her personality is obviously not for everyone, but you would at the very least give her credit for being different. But unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case. While the people who are into the mischievous kitsune trope find her refreshing and entertaining, the other majority just dislike her because she's mean to the traveler, even though she's meant to be that way because she's a kitsune. Yes, it's a trope, but at least it's a trope that's unique to her. I personally think that if all of the characters are friendly towards the traveler, then it would just be the overworked waifu situation all over again. You can only make so many friendly characters in a gacha game before you inevitably have to reuse the same personality or trope. Which is again something that we have seen happen. People say they want something spicier, they want morally ambiguous characters, and yet when Hoyo gives a slightly mean fox lady, a lot of people seem to have an issue with it. Saying things like she's an ass for tricking the traveler into paying for her meal, like the audacity of this bitch, honestly. And it's for this reason that I think most people don't really want a morally ambiguous character, period. While you could argue that Yae Miko is just isn't well written enough and is too much of the kitsune trope, the harbingers also suffer from this exact treatment. Child and Scaramouche are some of the most controversial characters in Genshin. And to this day, a lot of people still can't move past the child tried to drown people in Liyue debacle, even though it's clearly stated that he's forced to do so because he needs to do his job. So do people really want morally ambiguous characters in Genshin? I sure hope so because I want all of the Harbingers to be playable. And the Harbingers aren't good people. The Saritsa isn't a good person. They will be either evil, like pure evil like Dottore, or morally ambiguous at best. Unless Hoyu pulls another, ooh, it wasn't my fault waifu bullshit. But that's a discussion for another day. And lastly, we have the exceptions. The well-written waifus. The waifus who are given enough screen time to fully flesh out their lore and story. When it comes to female characters with good writing, at least in Genshin, and at least for me, Shenhe, Yalan, and Nahida come to mind. All three of them have really good character arcs and all of them have unique motivations, their quests show different dynamics between them and other characters. All in all, they feel like an actual person. They are fully fleshed out characters. Ironically though, the same thing can be said about a lot of the 4 stars. I've only talked about the 5 stars up until this point and that's because given how much money people are incentivized to spend on them, you would think that they would have better writing as they do scaling. But the 4 stars like Beidou, Rosaria, Ningguang, and even fucking Fischl feel more fleshed out as characters than a lot of the 5 stars I mentioned. Beidou is what you would call a supporting character if Genshin was an anime, but because of how Hoyo presented her in the story, you can't help but become somewhat attached to her. And that's because the few times that she does appear in the story, it is always fucking memorable. She's the one who brought you to Inazuma, she's the one who took in Kazuha, the true protagonist of Genshin, and essentially saved his life. She also helped the rebellion in the war that she had 
no connection to just because she cares about Kazuha. Ning Bong has a rags to riches story that a lot of people don't know because it's hidden behind a wall of text like everything else in this game. But you do see her as a competent leader that is willing to sacrifice her most treasured possession, the literal symbol of her wealth, the Jade Chamber, in order to save Liu Wei. Twice. Official, while just another normal girl, has been given enough screen time that she just feels like a person that exists in Teyvat and that you occasionally bump into. And the last exception I want to talk about today is Ayaka. She is Hoyo vs. Darling, the first ever character designed for Genshin. And she does actually have a compelling backstory. She is definitely an exception, but I wouldn't necessarily say a good one. Like the overworked waifus, Ayaka's quest is notorious for being full of fan service moments despite the overarching theme of it being Ayaka's loneliness and her inability to make genuine connections with the people around her due to her high status. Which is why she says she has no friends, even though Toma is right there. She is such an exception that she even gets an amazing trailer for her rerun with Ayato that showcased a lot more of her backstory and how she worked so hard to become the Shirasagi Himegimi that we all know and love. But somehow everything else about her boils down to her admiration towards the Traveler, which is completely fine. If only they didn't go this hard with the fan service. Listen, I can understand Ayaka being sheltered and having a bit of a crush on the Traveler because they're cool and they did help Inazuma. But did Hoyo have to make so much of her appearance in the game? about the Traveler. Kokomi also has a crush on the Traveler and so does Nilu, which is understandable because the Traveler is supposed to be a cool person in the story, like they're supposed to be a Chad. But when you think of Kokomi and Nilu, you don't think of them as being the Traveler simp character like you do when you think of Ayaka. Kokomi and Nilu don't get mischaracterized to the point that people start calling them a yandere. Yandere Ayaka is a whole other thing in itself, but honestly, if Genshin had an official waifu, it would be without a doubt Ayaka, which again is fine. Just that being the official waifu of the game stripped Ayaka from having in-game moments that are actually genuine and explores her character. Each interaction that we have with her always ends up being a fan service moment and it honestly sucks. I would rather have her interact with Ayato, with Yoimiya, with Toma than another moment with the Traveler. And this is why a lot of people think that she's terribly written when she's not. She actually has a lot of interesting backstory to her. It's just that Hoyo is just going so hard with the fan service. People forget that she's an actual character. I swear, I think there's just a big chunk of the community that actually thinks she's a yandere. But again, complaining about too much fan service in an anime gacha game will literally get me nowhere. So where does this leave us? Is the state of female characters in Genshin that bad? I would say yes in terms of execution. I think Hoyo is just terrible at showing the characters is death because they just find it much easier to sell these characters when they fit into certain tropes. Which is a shame because a lot of them are designed with well thought out lore that will forever be hidden behind a wall of text. Unless of course Hoyo steps up their game and actually let their female characters be characters instead of waifus. And they have done this before. A's second story quest is the exploration of her grief and her relationship with Makoto. Which is why it's so well received by the community. It allowed her to feel like an actual person than just another waifu to add to your collection. But hey, she's an archon so she's bound to get special treatment at some point. So that concludes my rant about the state of female characters in Genshin. Let me know what you think about this whole thing. Do you agree or disagree with me? Leave it in the comments. Subscribe and like if you want. If not, that's fine too. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.